Okay, so we're on the final cycle. We finally made it. Um, and we're actually gonna sequence the intro cutscene. So we made a very basic timeline, just animating a piece of text, playing some audio, and then changing the text with a custom track. Um, now what we're gonna do is, as I said earlier on, I've already kind of made a half-finished timeline, and we're gonna combine these two together. So we're gonna have timeline A and timeline B, and timeline A is then going to sequence timeline B. So we're gonna piece together this countdown into that intro cutscene of the camera flying around the track. It's quite easy to do, but there's still a couple of caveats and a couple of things I need to point out. So, if I now switch back to here. So, in my project, underneath um, in the timelines folder, we had the countdown timeline, which is the one I made, and have the cutscene timeline as well. So this is a timeline already pre-set up with different clips and different tracks and things like that, which you can see very, very soon. And underneath the prefabs folder, in the timeline folder, we had that countdown UI, which is the three, two, one, go, and we also have the cutscene timeline prefab. I'm not gonna drag that into my scene. Nothing, there won't be any noticeable changes, but I'm just gonna step through what this cutscene timeline prefab has, which we structured up so just to save time. Has a playable director, kind of like how the countdown UI had a playable director to play that three, two, one countdown. We also got one for the cutscene here. It's playing on awake, so it's gonna happen at the beginning because it's an intro cutscene. It's also running in game time, and it doesn't loop because we don't want to begin the race and then it keeps looping that same intro cutscene. We want to get to the end and then stop. We have also here are three different camera shots. And each of these, just using empty game objects to hold these camera shots, are different po points or different Cinemachine cameras of that intro cutscene. So this first one, if I select it here, you notice here that I'm using a Cinemachine virtual camera, pretty much identical to the one that we had, uh, well not identical, but pretty much the same setup that we had with the ship. But instead of following the ship, it's basically sitting at a static place. And one thing you do with Cinemachine is you can change the priorities of the cameras. So you can set some are more, more dominant than others and some render before other ones. But if I click solo, I can then see that this Cinemachine, ignore the UI, but this Cinemachine virtual camera is now looking at the anti-gravitator flags, which is subtle advertising. And the answer is, <laughs> there you go, man, um, of the flags moving. And the flags are using a shader to move, which is, we're not in play mode, but it's a pretty cool effect. Um, also have here a second Cinemachine camera, which looks almost the same, but it's slightly to the side, because over timeline, it's gonna blend the first camera to the second camera very, very slowly. The next virtual camera is positioned here, and this is a dolly track. So what we have in Cinemachine, if I click the Cinemachine drop down here, you can also create a spline path to have a camera, or also now a not camera, so you can actually have the ship following a spline path, uh, following the dolly, dolly spline path as well, and have a camera follow that. So if you remember at the beginning when we showed the end projects of the camera going through the cave and then going into the tunnel, some people were like, oh, I remember that. Some people were like, that was such a long time ago. Well, I, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> if the term dolly doesn't mean anything, do you just think of like a, a train track or roller coaster that the camera moves on as it looks at stuff, right? So we're just basically setting up a path that the camera will follow. And if I fly up here, that green line is the dolly track. I try to make a very simple one, not too twisty, but this dolly track has a series of waypoints, uh, as you can see here. And each of those waypoints can be grabbed and moved and manipulated. We can see here that this track has a series of waypoints. So we have waypoint zero, waypoint one, and waypoint two, just making this nice curve. And if I now go down to waypoint one and select it, notice that I can then move and manipulate this point, and you see that the spline actually changes. We actually also have the handles as well. So changing the handles will make the camera follow the track in a slightly different way. Now that's gonna make the camera go through the track, so I'm gonna undo that. Um, and I've tried to set up very basic so you can actually modify it and tweak it and, and change that dolly track. And the last shot is just this. It starts at the top. We're gonna blend this down into our follow cam. So with all that set up, I'm then gonna go back to timeline, click that little selector which I showed earlier on, and you see where we have the countdown timeline? We now have a cutscene timeline, because remember we have that second playable director. If I now select that, you'll notice that I then have this timeline in play here. This timeline has a couple of tracks you may be familiar with um, and a couple that you don't. The first one is an animation track, and this is basically, secret, uh, this is basically animating the dolly at a certain point. So with these three camera shots, the first one being the actual beginning shot of the flags, 
The second shot is going to be of the camera following that dolly path. And then the third shot is of the camera in a, a high up position blending into the, back of the, uh, into the back of the ship. You can see here you have keyframes because the animation track allows you to actually keyframe on the track. So what we have here is we're animating um, the actual dirt and you can see that we actually have a curve here of the camera starting at the start of the dolly path and then animating towards the end. Another track you have here is the Cinemachine track. So when you download Cinemachine, it'll actually already come integrated with a timeline track. And what you can do is have each of these clips and kind of like how we had the TextMesh Pro clip that changed the text. What each of these clips will do is actually change which virtual camera the main camera wants to use. And what I'm going to do is currently, if I now scrub through this, nothing is actually happening. And that's because the Cinemachine track requires a binding to a Cinemachine brain. So I'm going to bind it to the main camera, which has the Cinemachine brain, which is controlling the camera the, and what the virtual camera is it's going to use. You notice that as I scrub through, I have a blend between these two, these two virtual cameras here. So we've got this first virtual camera, which is set up here, the second virtual camera, which is set up here. So a very subtle blend between there. Then also have this, yeah, ignore the go in the UI. Also have this dolly cam flying through during this clip's duration. And at the end, have this last clip not actually doing anything. So what I want to do is I want to take this clip and actually set it up so that it doesn't just sit there, it blends into that follow virtual camera we made pretty much at the beginning of the day. And to do that, it's kind of similar to the audio track and the animation track. I'm going to right click the Cinemachine track. Okay. Right click the Cinemachine track. It says add Cinemachine shot clip, not a clip clip. It will then create a new clip, kind of like TextSwitch Pro, uh, TextSwitcher, um, and when we imported the animation and audio. And then in the uh, clips data, clicking that target, we then have all the virtual cameras we can define for this exact shot. And look here, we have the follow cam, because that is a virtual camera we can blend to. And then now, what you'll notice is that as I scrub through, it will pop between the cameras. We don't want it to pop. Instead, I can drag it and actually blend it together like this and actually have the camera blends from point A to point B. And of course, trim this down so it doesn't keep blending. So here we have this shot here from this bird's eye camera. And then during this blend, it then blends down to that follow camera. So it's a nice transition. So you could set up the dolly cam to then fly around and then blend to the back of the ship. So yeah, we have this very nice blend here. And if I now click play at the beginning, flags are waving. Dolly track is then rolling around. So you can set the roll of the individual points of the dolly track as well. It goes there and hits go. I'm not going to go to play mode because technically that won't work. We could still drive around on the track. But instead, just going to leave it like that. And then in the last step, we then tie it all together. Actually, if I go into play mode, you can still race the ship around during this cutscene. So you can kind of have the cutscene taking place and see the ship racing around, although it makes the game significantly more difficult to play. So the steps that I did was went to the timeline uh, prefab folder, select the cutscene timeline prefab, dragged it into the scene. You don't have to go through and preview each of, the, each of the virtual cameras. I've already set them up into different shots. Then on the timeline window, go to the little selector here and switch from countdown UI. We can always switch back to countdown UI and modify and change things there. Switch to the cutscene timeline. Set the Cinemachine camera uh, binding to be the main camera, so the brain. Uh, you, uh, the Cinemachine brain that we added to the main camera at the beginning of the day. And then on that Cinemachine track, which will be red, right click, add Cinemachine shot clip, and then on that clip, point it to the follow camera, and then blend it, and then trim it. We have all the steps on the slides, just like so.